what caused the downfall of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo from Narcos, Mexico. Now, after last week's video on Felix Gallardo, we established that the man was a strategic genius. He essentially became the godfather and founder of true organized crime in the Mexican drug trade, which made him at one point one of the most powerful men in Mexico during the 70s and 80s, higher than even some politicians and government officials. I mean, the guy was pretty much untouchable. So you may be thinking, how was it a man that had accumulated so much power to the point where he had the highest of the high in his pocket to eventually lose it all? Now, the typical answer is, when you lead a life of crime, it never really ends well. So kids, don't sell drugs. But one of the biggest reasons as to why Felix ended up crashing and burning down was because he violated one of the most important principles of the game, which was the 19th law of power. Know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. There are many different kinds of people in this world and you can never assume that everyone will react to your strategies in the same way. Deceive or outmaneuver some people and they will spend the rest of their lives seeking revenge. They are wolves in lamb's clothing. Choose your victims and opponents carefully. Then never offend or deceive the wrong person. Now, Felix was known to play the game of power beautifully. He understood that one of the strongest principles of accumulating power was to get people to depend on him and to concentrate his forces, which I covered in last week's video. And he spent many years of carefully planning and maneuvering himself into a position to which he was able to dangle and control the strings of many powerful gangs, police chiefs and politicians essentially becoming one of the most powerful men in Mexico. But no matter how powerful you are, you've got to be very naive to think that in this world, that there isn't someone more powerful than you. And that was the biggest mistake that Felix made. Now, the US is one of the most powerfulest, if not the most powerfulest country in the world. But it's also seen as one of the proudest. It's common knowledge that a proud man doesn't take insults lightly, which is what ultimately makes him very dangerous. The US government, more so the DEA, already had Felix in their sights, gathering up intel and building up a case to eventually take him down on drug charges. But it was very hard for the agents to do so, as they had very limited resources to fight against a very powerful protected man. But once the murder, of DEA agent Kiki Camarena in 1985 was revealed to the world, this is when Felix would then feel the full force and power of the United States government come striking down. Kiki Camarena was one of us. He was ours. And when he was killed, we knew we were in a war. Now, it was our turn. Pretty soon, they were gonna know they were in one too. The murder of Agent Camarena pissed off this very proud country, which led to an overwhelming force of pissed off Americans to come and unite together around one simple goal. Bring the murderers of Kiki to justice. Now, even though it did take time and the agents did have to jump through a lot of hurdles due to the dark and murky ties between Felix and the Mexican government. This still didn't stop the relentless onslaught and pressure the US government rained down upon them. I mean, the sheer audacity of murdering one of their own people in cold blood was taken very personally by a lot of US officials and agents, driving them even further each time they faced a new obstacle to take him down. Because of this thirst for revenge and justice, and the constant relentless pressure from the US government, on the 8th of April 1989, Felix Gallardo was arrested and charged with the murder of DEA agent Kiki Camarena, and was ultimately sentenced to 37 years in prison. Now don't get it twisted, 
I know that there are plenty of rumours and conspiracy theories regarding the actual real life event and in reality things are far more complicated than they actually seem. There are countless theories insinuating that in actual fact it was the Mexican government that ordered the murder of Kiki Camarena and when the US demanded justice the Mexican government let Felix take the fall in exchange to allow him to continue running his cartel behind bars. Some say it was just Felix acting on his own and some even say that the CIA was secretly involved. Now I can literally go on and on about theories all day as the rabbit hole of this story never stops. But the fact of the matter is, in this very dark and political world, it is really hard to get to the truth of it all. That's why I'm mainly referring to the events portrayed in the Narco Show and not too much surrounded the actual real events behind it, as we will never know for certain what the true circumstances were and I do like to keep an open mind when I don't have all the facts. But even so, whether it was Felix, the Mexican government or the CIA, the ultimate point still stands. That someone really offended the US, which led them to go to great lengths to get justice. And this is the point that I want you to take away. In your rise to power, you will come across many different breeds of opponents and victims. The highest form of the art of power is the ability to distinguish the wolves from lambs, the foxes from the hares and the hawks from the vultures. If you can make this distinction well, you will succeed without needing to coerce anyone too much. But if you deal blindly with whomever crosses your path, you will have a life of constant sorrow, even if you live that long. Being able to recognise these types of people and to act accordingly is critical. This is the point that I'm referring to regarding Felix's downfall, was the fact that he completely miscalculated and took the wrong approach, offending a very proud and powerful enemy who set out on a course of vengeance and wouldn't stop until they got it. The point is, is that a lot of people think that power is all about being the big man, being able to pump your chest out, let your dick hang low and pick a fight with anyone you want. But in reality, this couldn't be further from the case. One of the fundamental principles in gathering and conserving true power is having the ability to measure people and to know who you're dealing with. It's about calculating and navigating around people in a strategic way. By going around thinking that you can say what you want and trying to pick a fight with everyone isn't the smartest move. Each and every person you face is different. The banter that you may be able to have with one person may create insecurity in another. The moves you make against a weak opponent are not the same moves that you can make against a strong opponent. The point is, is that before embarking on any move, you need to take the time to calculate and measure your mark. An example of this is with Kiki's situation in the show. Instead of killing him in cold blood, which no doubt would have created an uproar in a proud enemy, Felix could have negotiated with the US, using and threatening to damage their reputation or pride, unless they back off, using their own personality traits into his favour, by being so politically powerful, it wouldn't have been hard for Felix to get some secret dirt on the US, which he can then use to threaten to expose their dirty secrets and publicly damage their proud reputation on the world. This would have given Felix the leverage to negotiate with the US government to back off, in exchange allowing Kiki to go free, with the US quietly sweeping the whole situation under the rug and moving on. But the thing is, it should have never got to that position in the first place. I mean a clear example of Felix's cunning and calculated thinking is shown in this scene where Felix strikes a deal with the CIA in exchange to get DEA pressure off his back. Hmm. What the fuck? Maps. 
Son todas las rutas que le propongo para mover toda su feria y todas las armas por la región. Se cayó un avión de mata, ¿verdad? Yo creo que ahorita ya lo sabe todo el Congreso gringo, ¿no? Yes. ¿Cuánto cree que falta para que se llegue la mata? ¿Cuánto para que le tiren su programa y se vaya todo a la verga? Go on. This is what I meant by taking the time out to strategically analyze how to deal with an enemy. Exactly like how Felix did here, but not how he did with Kiki. Yes, granted, in the show it was the Mexican government that kidnapped him, but unfortunately, it was already too late. The deal that he made with the CIA only took the pressure off temporarily and only bought Felix some time until his inevitable arrest. And this is why it is so important to not offend the wrong person. Because as soon as you've made that mistake and they've targeted and set their sights on you, then they are very hard to shake off. Now, I'm not saying to never get into conflicts with people, as conflicts, especially in the world of business, are inevitable. But what I'm saying is, is to not do anything stupid that will cause you to offend the wrong person in the wrong way. Sun Tzu suggests that one of the greatest traits of a strong military commander is to know when to fight and when not to fight. And to know if the enemy is way stronger than you, then you must simply avoid them. Never piss off the wrong person unnecessarily. In simple terms, don't go around being a dickhead because you never know who you may cross paths with. Take the time out to figure out who you're dealing with. Things such as who they are and what they are like. Otherwise, you will waste time and make mistakes. Study people's weaknesses. The gaps in their armor. Their areas of both pride and insecurity. Know their ins and outs before you even decide whether or not to deal with them. If you want to turn people down, it is better to do so politely and respectfully. Again, just going back to the point of not being a dickhead. Never reject them with an insult until you know them better. In judging your opponent, never rely on just your instincts. You will make the greatest mistakes of all if you rely on such inexact indicators. Nothing can substitute for gathering concrete knowledge. Study and spy on your opponent for however long it takes. The more you know about them, the more you can maneuver strategically around them giving you the knowledge of knowing what to do and what not to do. If it wasn't for the murder of Kiki Camarena, I highly doubt the US would have pulled so much resources on this guy and I'm sure he would have lasted way longer than he actually did. And that explains the downfall behind Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo and the principle that you can take away from him so that you don't experience the same downfall as him is by ensuring that you never violate the principle of offending the wrong person. Always take the time out to know who you're dealing with and always ensure you calculate, strategize and effectively analyze your opposition. And that is what is going to grant you way more power in your life and in the world of business. Now, like with all character breakdowns on the channel, I tried to focus on what powerful strategies and principles that we can learn from these characters and also from their mistakes in order to be able to think that bit more strategically, whether that's in life or business. And if you are interested in learning more about these strategic strategies and principles I cover, then make sure you click the link in the description to sign up for our newsletter. I always get asked, to go much deeper into more principles and strategies. But there is only so much I can talk about in just one YouTube video. That's why for nearly a whole year, I've been non-stop working on something that is going to absolutely blow you away. I mean, you think you learn a lot from the character breakdowns that I do now? Well, think again, because when I launch what I've been working on for you, I can tell you it is going to put you on that journey to becoming that master strategic thinker that you've always wanted to be. So if you are interested in what I've been working on, 
make sure you click the link in the description to sign up for our newsletter, as I will be making an announcement on there very soon. So make sure you go do that. And if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below on what your thoughts and feelings are about Felix. Comment some of your favourite lessons and quotes from him and let me know what your conspiracy theories are about him. And let me know what character breakdown would you like to see next. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel and to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We do some of the best character breakdowns on the whole of YouTube and we aim to produce at least one high quality animated video per week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden knowledge. I'll see you soon.